Welcome to Financial Algebra Unit 2 Lesson 5, where we're going to be graphing equations using slope-intercept form. So let's get right into it. Okay. So here's what the lesson objective is for this video. Okay, by the end of this video, you should be able to identify the slope and the y-intercept of an equation and use them to graph that equation. Right? So we have other ways of graphing. We're going to specifically try to use the y-intercept and the slope to quickly graph it without having to use a table or a uh, any other method, okay? So here's our, our quick summary, right? So to create a graph using slope-intercept form, we're gonna first identify the slope and the y-intercept from the equation, right? It's called slope-intercept form, so we should be able to locate those items. We are going to plot the y-intercept because it's a location, it's a point where the line crosses the y-axis, so we should be able to plot that coordinate. And then after we do that, we're gonna use the slope to generate new points starting at the y-intercept, right? So slope, you may have uh, heard referred to as rise over run, right? So the top number is gonna talk about how much up and down movement we're gonna do from the y-intercept. And the bottom number is gonna talk about how much left and right movement we do from the y-intercept. And that's gonna let us generate new points so that we end up with a line, okay? So we're gonna refer back to this. Let's get into example A, right? Which is y equals one third x plus four. Okay, so if we go back to our instructions, it says first identify the slope and the y-intercept. So for slope, uh, it, the form is usually y equals mx plus b. So over here, I'm just going to use the letter m to refer to the slope. Okay, and our slope is going to be the number that's attached to the x, which is one third. Okay, and then my y-intercept is this uh, end value that has no variable attached to it. I'm going to use b for that. So our B value in this case is four, but one thing I wanna remind you is that this four is actually a location on the Y axis. So it's actually the point zero comma four, right? Every Y axis point is zero comma something, right? Zero comma one, zero comma two, zero comma three, and for us, zero comma four. Okay, so we did the first step. We identified the slope of one third. We identified the Y intercept of zero comma four. All right, so let's go back and see what the next step is. It says plot the y-intercept. All right, that's easy enough. All right, so we're gonna go up to zero comma four. We're gonna put down a point, okay? And then the last step says, starting at the y-intercept, so with our pen on the y-intercept, we're gonna use the slope to create new points. The top number of the slope fraction is your up and down movement. The bottom number is your left and right movement. So that means that we're gonna look at this slope number and the top value, the one, is gonna tell us to move up or down one and then the bottom number is gonna tell us to move left or right by three, right? So your question might be, well, do I go up or down? When I'm moving one, do I move up from that four by one or do I move down by one, right? So that's all always gonna rely on the sign, right? If I have a positive number, I'm gonna move in the positive direction. If I have a negative number, I'm gonna move in the negative direction, right? And then the same for left and right. If I have a positive three, I'm gonna move in the positive direction, which is right. And if I have a negative number, I will move in the negative direction, which is left. So for us, this problem is positive, positive. So I'm gonna move up, which is a positive direction, to the right by three, which is a positive direction. I'm gonna put down a point, okay? And then I'm gonna do this again, up by one, to the right by three. And I can do this as many times as I want to generate new points, okay? I'm gonna run off my graph, so I'm gonna stop right there. All right, if I wanted to, I could also go in the other direction. So positive one and positive three is actually equivalent to negative one and negative three, right? So this is really positive one third, just like this is positive one third. So if I wanted to, I could move down and to the left, right? And that would generate more points as well. So if you're kind of finding you're running off the graph one way, you can change direction and head the other way just by switching the signs of both parts, right? So now I can graph this, right? I can draw the line, right? My last step is to just draw a line through these points, right? So I'm gonna get my pen and draw as best as I can, right? So we're gonna go through all these points, okay? arrows on the end, because this does continue off the graph. That's just as far as we could go, right? And there it is, we drew our line, okay? And that's all there is to it. We're gonna identify the slope and the y-intercept, okay? We're gonna graph the y-intercept point, and then we're gonna use the slope to move to some new points, okay? So let's take a look at some more examples, right? That might have some kind of different things going on, see? So again, when I'm starting off with this problem, I'm gonna look for the slope and the y-intercept, okay? So I'm gonna say my uh, slope in this case is negative five over two, so m, is negative five over two, okay? And my B value is one, which means my Y-intercept is the point zero comma one, right? And that's that point I just slightly erased, okay? So now here's the question, with a negative slope, how do I move to get more points, right? And, and the way I wrote this slope is negative five, positive two, 
right? And you might be like wondering, well, like, why did you choose that, right? So let's come up to the side here. The slope in the problem is written as the whole fraction is negative, okay? I chose to write my slope as negative five on the top, positive two on the bottom, but you could have equally written positive five on the top and negative two on the bottom, right? If you type either of these in your calculator, you get negative 2.5. They mean the same thing. It's just where you decide you want to put the negative sign, right? So we could use, let's use this first one. So I'm going to start off at my zero comma one and I'm going to move down by five, right? The negative uh, up and down direction would be down one, two, three, four, five. And then my two is positive. So I'm going to move to the right by two, okay? And I can do that again down five to the right by two, okay? And then if I'm looking and saying like, oh, I'm off the graph, but I need some points over here, I could now look at this one and say, well, this says I can go up by five and to the left by two. So let's do that. One, two, three, four, five to the left by two. There's another point. And if you notice, that's on the same line. So that makes sense. We can use either one, okay? So now I'm gonna graph this line. I'm gonna draw the line through these points, okay? And we get our nice graph, okay? And so that's really all there is to it. It's just to continue this process of putting down the y-intercept using the slope to move, okay? So the last two examples, were, they're gonna be the same thing. We're just gonna look at some special circumstances where in, in example C, there's no B value here, right? We can identify that the y-intercept, I'm sorry, that the slope is negative three, but there's no number after that. So it's like, well, what's the y-intercept? Okay, in this case, the y-intercept is plus zero, right? We don't usually write plus zeros. It's just assumed that if you don't write anything that you didn't add anything, right? So for us, our B value is actually zero. So if there's nothing present there, it's zero, which means we're going through the origin, the point zero comma zero, okay? And now here's another interesting thing. Negative three is my slope, but all of our other problems had two parts to them. We had an up and down number and a left and right number. This one doesn't have that, right? It only has the negative three. So just to remind you, any whole number can be written as a fraction by just putting it over one, right? So now I can look at this problem and say, oh, okay, you want me to go down by three, one, two, three, and then positive direction one is over here. And I can do that a couple times and there we go, right? So I'm not gonna extend this to one the other way. We, we can see this nice line. It's gonna go down, okay? And then we'll go up in this direction, okay? And approximately look like that, okay? So there we go, we have our graph, okay? So just watch out for these weird special cases where there might be something missing. Here's your last example, and this is another one of those, okay? My equation is y equals x minus five, so I think the b value is a little bit more obvious here, right, the negative five, don't forget the sign, minus, okay? So that means that I'm gonna go through negative, or I'm sorry, zero comma negative five. Okay, let's put that down. That's right here, okay? But now, there's nothing in front of the x, right? There is no m value that I can see. But I just want to remind you that anytime you write x, you're really writing one x, right? If we don't put a number in front of the x, uh, any variable, we assume that it's one. So my slope in this case is one, which I'm actually going to write as one over one, right? Because I want a fraction. Slopes are always fractions. So this is telling me positive direction one, positive direction one. And I can do that a lot, okay? And then if I wanted to, I could also go negative, negative, because that's still one, right? And there you go. I have this nice set of points that I can draw my line through. And there it is, okay? So that's all there is to it, okay? Identify the two uh, important numbers, the slope and the y-intercept. Start at the y-intercept and then move and generate some points. And every single time, you should end up with a nice line.